So we're here at the Computer Clubhouse at the Museum of Science in Boston. This is now one of about 100 computer clubhouses around the world. So actually, it's been more than 20 years now since we started the very first computer clubhouse. Yeah, at the Computer Museum, we started it after some young people have been using the Lego programmable motors and building things, and they kept coming back to the museum. We later learned that they were actually sneaking into the museum, but they were looking for opportunities, and there weren't other after-school programs around for them. I know one thing that you were really strong about from the beginning is that it was important for kids to see this as a place where they could follow their own interests, work on things that they really cared about. Yeah, and build projects based on their interests. Yeah. So I read, read the, it connects to a lot of the themes we're talking about in the course of sort of their projects and their passion of how kids can follow their own passion. I think we're motivated by those first kids sneaking in because they were kids that were getting in trouble after school and having trouble in school, but they really wanted to come in and work on these projects that we saw as these rich learning experiences. So we wanted to make sure they had a way to follow up on those passions. Why don't we go inside and, and take a look at uh, the clubhouse here. So here at, here's Jackie Gonzalez, who's the coordinator of the clubhouse. So it's great seeing you, Jackie. <laughs> so actually, actually, how long have you been the coordinator here now? Almost two years. Yeah. So maybe you can just show us around the clubhouse a little bit, talk about you know the, the way the clubhouse is set up. Sure. Um, first, I want to talk a little bit about the space. You'll notice there's a lot of chairs and a green table. Uh, the green table is traditional in most clubhouses, which is a fun fact. And um, it's sort of like a village green where people sort of yeah, come together, no, like a meeting. Just for the naturally, community. new and regular folks will come in and just kind of hang out. And no computers on that. It's just a place where people have lunch there, sketch no, there. Lots yeah. of Legos yeah. and uh, storyboarding and things like that happen there, or whatever miscellaneous crafts happen. And then you'll notice there's a bunch of chairs. We call it a sea of chairs here. <laughs> and that's because a lot of our projects are collaborative. So it's always, you know, a couple of young people and maybe a mentor. And the chairs all have wheels. It's always, I've heard that <laughs> yeah. sort of thing. I mean, you just roll around <laughs> from site to site. <laughs> On the walls, we have, you know, miscellaneous projects from the young people. Of the work they've done. Yeah, I think those, the, the, the things on the wall to me always felt really important because it gives someone a sense of what's possible. So when they walk in, you could just take a look and you see what type of projects there are and get inspired by what's possible. Yeah, it's definitely a point of pride and also a point of, uh, I'm looking for something to do. Yeah. That's really cool. How is that made? And oftentimes, I mean, one of my favorite things about this wall is that, you know, I can identify every person that's done these projects and their backstory or like what happened when they were doing that. And oftentimes it's cool when a new member is like, wow, that's a really neat project. I can say, oh, well, so-and-so did that. Meet so-and-so. And then they can kind of talk about the process and they even often get them started on their own project. Maybe you can talk about some of the different types of projects kids work on. Are there different parts of the room where there sure. certain types of projects? On this wall, you'll notice that we're not all tech oriented. We do a lot of what we call high tech, low tech. And um, that's part uh, because we're about you know, creative expression, but also this is a safe space and we're about relationships, so it's fun to just hang out and do paper modeling or duct tape crafting, but also um, sometimes, you know, there's some duct tape purses on the wall and a member that made them actually created a website and started selling them online. So there are other useful skills that come from these projects. Sort of the spirit of a maker space, there are all types of making going on. Uh, even though the idea here started long before people were talking about maker spaces, yeah, uh, I think the idea of just making with all sorts of media, whether it's paper or computers. And we definitely try to make it all ages too. Like our latest craze has been these um, light up LED dioramas. So I think this one has a functioning bulb, so it's pretty faint. But yeah. um, this was inspired by these toilet paper rolls that we saw that were actually done in super miniature ways and um, we just kind of made it a little more user-friendly and also attached some LEDs and experimented with diffused light. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, continuing on with the high-tech, low-tech, we actually just completed a girls program where we worked with 10 to 13-year-old girls. And one of the activities that we did, which was a fan favorite, was we used Play-Doh and experimented with sculpture, and then we translated that with a 3D modeling software called Sculptress, and so it's free to download. And um, this was made by Katrina, who's 10 years old, 
and she really loved playing with uh, Play-Doh and actually a mentor is really skilled in um, 3D animation. So she sat with her and kind of got her started and she's been making Yodas and Elmos <laughs> and all sorts of things. And so you can actually, um, you know, oh, wow. she was able to create these kinds of shapes and she's been doing all sorts of things and you can take those projects and actually 3D print them. So we actually printed a little Elmo head that she created, <laughs> and some of our older members have now been creating some really intense characters. Oh, that's great. Uh, so this is kind of our maker corner. Uh, a lot of different things happen here. We have our 3D printer, our sewing machine, a heat press for t-shirt designs, and a vinyl cutter. And then over here we have like Legos and miscellaneous computer parts. And so with our vinyl cutter, a range of projects come out like decals for water bottles or laptops and things like that, either for their friends or for a cause. And then the sewing machine, people make hats or, or hem things or uh, we have recently been experimenting with disassembling stuffed animals and then adding LEDs and rehemming them inside out. So it's kind of a weird but cool project. <laughs> and then uh, with our 3D printer, uh, the popular thing right now is 3D printed jewelry and cookie cutters. So um, a lot of our members just think it's cool to be able to design something and then print it and actually use it in, in a kitchen or something instead of just like, oh, here's a 3D print I made. We're really trying to think about ways of taking it further and practical uses for our 3D prints. Um, and so we have, they can get kind of, you know, simple shapes or they can get pretty details. So this is an octopus. Um, and so a, lo a lot of our members have been experimenting with uh, jewelry making and things like that here. Um, so the music studio is one of the more popular areas of the clubhouse. It's definitely the most utilized. Um, this is definitely a great space for collaboration and um, relationship building. I've been coming to the clubhouse for three years time, dropping beats in the studio and freeing my mind, letting go, letting it flow, my ideas they grow, they aren't put down or squash, nothing here is impossible, I flourish in my community, a group of positive people saying that you can be what you want and when you get it you got it, you gotta go back and get them, you can't hold on to that knowledge, you gotta share it with them, cause what you know in your mind, somebody taught it to you, your success is a failure if it only belongs to you, that's what we do with the club. Um, this is Marquise, aka Tayshawn Gray, and you know, he came in the clubhouse yesterday and said, you know, I need someone to do a Photoshop project, and myself and one of his friends were like, why don't you do it? And so his friend actually went and helped him to take this photo. He's a videographer, so he kind of created this wonderful shot, and then, you know, Tayshawn, Christian, and I just sat and experimented with Photoshop. I introduced him to a couple of fancy techniques and you know he spent an hour just really excited um, creating this beautiful project. I feel like he wouldn't have done that without you know friend support. And it's like he was invested in his music but then you it helped bridge to another area. Yeah and it also made him realize that you know if he wants to pursue this further um, you know he doesn't have to pay for someone to do this he can do it himself and also he had kind of started talking about he showed it to a couple of other members in the studio and was like hey if you need me to do this that was really fun <laughs> so. yeah, I do think that's one thing we've seen over the years is how it's great to start with an area of interest but you can then use that as it was comfortable there that makes it easier to start reaching out and trying something new oh yeah somewhere from your interest uh-huh so the videographer Christian he actually used to just come in the studio and hang out and um, he never really he would make music videos and he actually got really really good at making music videos and so we introduced him to Premiere Pro and Adobe sweet product and um, from there now he's interested in video making so we've actually paired him with you know a few mentors that are interested in video and he's been um, expanding his skills and now he has a demo reel and the museum actually you know offered a, him a position to work part-time like as a freelancer doing video work and so we kind of took that interest of you know helping his friends and doing the music videos and now we've applied it to now his passion is video i know one thing from the beginning we always talked about it was important to for young people to follow their interests but we also knew that it was not easy that sounds easy to, you know but it's not just a matter of saying okay go follow your interests maybe you can talk a little bit about how you help young people identify their interests how to follow up on it because i think that's often a big challenge 
feel like we try to connect the dots if it's if you're interested in skateboarding then we'll do a skateboarding video project or a photoshop project and then through that we introduce them to new things um so long as they're comfortable with something you know it can be stuffed animals or butterflies or anything you can make a scratch project or whatever so there's lots of instances where they don't come from being passionate about tech but they realize that here you know you can apply even if you're passionate about your friendships with people you can make cards or you can make buttons or photo collages and things like that i know you've done a lot to really help develop and find and support the mentors mm -hmm. yeah we take great uh pride in our i guess professional development opportunities for our mentors we try to really provide them with a safe space and sense of learning themselves um, and i find that they find it extremely rewarding to come here and learn stuff from the young people. And how do you help them? Because sometimes people feel like they need to be teaching or tell kids what to do. And how do you help them have come at it in a way that's supportive, but not like overly controlling? Well, I guess there are a couple things that we do, we do a training where we kind of go through it. But in the day to day, you know, I say it's really important to sit down, like just simple things like sit down next to the person when you're talking to them and when you're learning from them, because when you're standing at the top, it feels like you're in a classroom. And also a lot of times I look for the interests that aren't technical uh, between people. And, you know, if someone's interested in, um, I'm trying to think of a recent example. Um, so our 3D animator, for example, she's never done scratch programming before, but um, she does like video games. And so we had one of our younger members, David, uh, show her scratch and get her a scratch account. And so now they're friends on scratch. <laughs> and so it's kind of really cool. I mean, I said that before um, for our young people to be teaching skills. And so a lot of times, you know, with the teens, I try to, if they're looking to enhance their skills, then I go out of my way to kind of find mentors that can support that. But in general, our volunteers, I usually pair them with people to be taught. And how do you think about your role here? Um, well, I feel like on a good day, I'm kind of just chilling at the table, looking at interesting stuff or working on my own projects because I, you know, a young person will be like, I need help with Photoshop. I see a teen, we're, we're all about peer-to-peer -peer learning. Mm -hmm. And so I'll see a teen and say, hey, Qua, like help so-and-so with digital design. And, you know, this is just this community of shared learning. And so that everyone kind of comes in with this expectation that they're willing to help people or they want to help other people learn too. And so a lot, a good day is just me getting our young people to help other young people and our, mentors to be learning from the young people. So it's just kind of me watching and, and making sure that those kind of pairings are happening.